What's up everybody? It's your girl Tyra and I'm coming back at you again with another shipped video. How many videos is this now? This is like my sixth, seventh, sixth. That's right. Hey. Tyra, the creative. That's right. The creative. Today we will be talking all things customer interactions. Before we get into the video, I just want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Culver. Culver is a portable benefits platform for gig workers. It's not insurance, but income protection for people like you and me who use gig apps like Shift. Culver helps gig workers achieve financial security because let's face it, in the gig economy, income is not guaranteed. So Culver is here to help raise awareness for the sustainability challenges associated with app-based gig work. The best part about Culver is that they are 100% independent and the benefits go with you, not to the gig app companies. So if you want to work for Ship today and Instacart tomorrow, your benefits will carry over automatically. There are no annual contracts and since your benefits are month to month, you have the freedom to cancel or pause your benefits at any time. Culver offers three tiers of pricing which you can select based on your needs. $7 a month, $19 a month, and $49 a month. If none of those are right for you, you can also build your own custom plan. So what are these benefits I keep talking about? Culver replaces 80% of your lost income when you, when you can't work due to hospitalization, temporary account deactivation, or post-collision repairs. This is your money and you do not have to pay it back. Culver is used for Shipped, Instacart, Postmates, Uber and Lyft, DoorDash, Amazon Flex, Grubhub, Caviar, and Winolo. To receive one month of Culver for free, click the link in the description box below. And I will give you guys a couple of call scripts so you know how to communicate with your customer. So in a lot of my shift videos, I always get very, very specific questions about what you should say in certain situations. So if you have questions like that, or if you would like some sort of call script, this is the video for you. So we're gonna get right into it, you guys. We're gonna go through the entire shift shopping experience, and I'm gonna give you certain tips and tricks for things you can say to your customer customer at every part of the shop. So before we get into all of the call script stuff, I want to say anytime you are talking to a customer, please be yourself. Speak to them as you would a parent or someone that you view as an elder. Speak to them with respect. You don't want to be overly cheery and like all this extra stuff because it can come off as being insincere. And you also want to make sure that you are keeping that line of communication with the customer open at all times. So first we're going to start with beginning a shop or picking up an order that may already be late. So when you go into the Ship Shopper app, there's already an intro text that you can send, but sometimes those can be a little generic. So I like to put my own personal spin on messages. Normally the intro text only says, hi, my name is Tyra. I am your Ship Shopper and I will be beginning your shop shortly. Let me know if there's anything else you need. So if you wanted to say something a little extra you can add in some emojis or you can add in your bitmoji i've seen people do that whatever floats your boat that is when you do this so they can already know if you're going to be a great shopper if they're going to be able to communicate with you and all that kind of stuff now i normally do a personalized message when there's something more to be said than what's going on through the app so for example coronavirus and holidays so for the coronavirus i would always write my own message and i would say hey it's tired of ship shopper just to let you know no, stores are out of things, but I'm gonna do my best to get what you need and I may throw in a joke or two. Hopefully they have some toilet paper today and then an emoji. And for holidays, I would do the same thing. Memorial Day, Easter, just so they know, hey, it's Easter. This store may be out of eggs, but I'll be on the hunt. Or, you know, something just to add a little speck of sunshine to their day. This intro text comes in extreme importance whenever you're picking up an order that is already within the delivery window or that is late. So if I pick up an order that is already in the delivery window or close to it, I would say, hey customer, it's Tyria Ship Shopper. I'm just pulling up at the Target right now. I'm gonna run in and make sure that I get everything on your list. Is there anything else that you would like me to add? I think the biggest thing for me is to make sure that the messages that I'm sending are conversational because sometimes the ready-made messages that are in the app can be very generic and sound very robotic. I want to let them know that I'm a person with a pulse and a heartbeat and 
I'm shopping for your groceries. Number two would be shopping for the actual items. My number one rule for texting the customer while I'm shopping is to make sure that I am being descriptive and I am sending photos. If they don't have something that the customer wants and I know that the customer would like a substitute, I'm gonna have all of that stuff already ready. So for example, if a customer wanted to buy Sara Lee blueberry bagels and they're out of Sara Lee blueberry bagels, I would send them a message saying, hey customer, the store is actually out of the Sara Lee blueberry bagels but they do have type A bagels. Would you like me to get you those? I'm gonna send you a quick picture. And then I would take a photo and I would send that picture and then I would wait. The reason I do this is because it will save you so much time on the back end rather than saying, okay, they don't have those bagels and then going about your day because then they'll say, well, what kind do they have? And then you'll have to go back and list everything out and we don't have time for that. So just have it already ready at the beginning when they don't have it, send them the photo and then continue on your way. And whenever they respond you'll already know what to go back and get another thing to personalize the shopping experience is to notice trends we as humans have things that are our favorite so notice a trend if you see that your customer is ordering all of their snack foods in the flavor strawberry and they order this one item that's in a different flavor and they happen to have strawberry at that store go ahead and ask the customer if they would like you to pick up the strawberry flavored whatever it is because maybe through the app on their in strawberry wasn't an option i've done this multiple times and the customer is so grateful because they weren't able to see that that was an option on their end so they preferred that over what they actually put on their order next we're going to talk about making substitutions so i already spoke on if you didn't have the bagels in stock but i want to take it a little further yes please send them photos of all of the options that they have and also use voice to text i see a lot of ship shoppers when i'm out shopping and they're just constantly texting i personally believe that voice to text works so much better or you could go ahead and give the customer a call i think that'll make your experience so much more efficient so if you're making a substitution if there was only one option i personally would say something along the lines of hey customer they do not have the blueberry Sara Lee bagels, but they do have blueberry generic bagels. I am going to grab those for you. Let me know if you would like me to put them back. In that situation, you have made an executive decision, but you have let the customer know that this is what you're getting for them and they still have the option for you to put it back before you finish the shop. Sometimes you have a customer that only has a landline. In those types of situations, I would wait all the way to the end of the shop to give them one call. So in that one call, I'll run down everything. I will get my game plan from there. So if there were substitutions to be made or if there was things to put back, I would do all of that. And I would let the customer know, since you're on a landline, I am going to do the things that you told me to do. But if certain things are not available, I will just mark it as unavailable. I will not try to substitute again. That's in the rare case that they do have a landline. Most of the time, the people with the landline are older people and you just have to really play each situation by ear because every situation will be different. Number four is dealing with impatient customers. My biggest thing with that is under promise over deliver. For example, if your customer is being impatient because it's getting close to the end of their delivery window, then you want to send them a message just keeping them up to date on what happened. Let them know what happened in the store. Oh, my card declined. I think something is wrong with the server. It's really backed up in Target right now. That's why that introductory text is so important because especially if you picked up an order that's already in the delivery window, you can let them know, hey, I got your order kind of late. I'm gonna run in here and get this stuff so I can get it to you as soon as possible. I know you've been waiting on your groceries. So you wanna let them know whatever the circumstances are and that you'll get there in a decent amount of time. I have a story to tell you guys about this. This was when I first started doing Shipped. I was doing one order for this older lady and it was getting close to her the end of her delivery window. When I went to check out her order, she was like, okay, you're definitely not gonna make it to my house. I'm gonna cancel this order, all of this kind of stuff. And I was just like, first I was like, okay, lady cancel the order like what is that <laughs> cancel it but then I said okay Tyra she has probably been waiting for these groceries for a long time so I said hey customer 
I understand your frustration. If I were in your shoes, I would definitely want to get my groceries as soon as possible. I am booking it through the store. I'm in line right now. I may even send a photo to let her know how long the lines are. And I will text you as soon as I am on my way. At that point, I will say my ETA. Now, here's where the under promise over deliver comes in. If this lady lived five minutes away, I would say I would be there in eight nine to 10 minutes. I wanna make sure that I am accounting for traffic or if anything crazy happens on the street. I live in LA, so crazy stuff can happen. So I wanna make sure that I'm accounting for all of that stuff, but keep your customer updated. Let them know what's going on. And another side to that is when you are doing multiple orders and you have a customer that only ordered two or three things. Now, while you're doing the shop, you may have to ask them for substitutions and then they'll say, well, it seems like you got all my items. Where are you? Let them know that you're doing multiple orders at the same time. Hey customer, yes, I do have all of your items and I'm finishing up another shop right now. I am in Target. I am going to be headed to the register in about five minutes. I will let you know as soon as I am on my way to your house. You will be the first stop on my delivery route. Now let's talk about unresponsive customers. Sometimes you'll run into customers that just do not respond. They have no interest in talking with you. I still text them. I let them know the play by play of everything. And even though I know they may not respond, I still send them questions like, would you like me to add this to your shopping list or whatever the case may be? I will still put that there and I will then answer the question. So if I said, Hey, I noticed that they have a different flavor in the cookies that you wanted. Would you like me to grab those? If they did not respond by the time I get to the register, I would say, okay, since you didn't respond, I didn't grab those cookies for you. I will let you know when I'm on my way to your house. And I would do that because I wanna make sure that they know that I'm actually a real person. Some people think that it's like just robotic messages being sent through. So I will always stay in contact. I will always keep that communication open. And if there's anything that ever happens on the back end, you can send those messages to ship and say, no, I contacted this customer this many times. You always have a log. And let's just say that you completed your whole order. You haven't heard anything from the customer and you're going to the deliver it. When you drop off those groceries, make sure you take a photo and you send the photo to the customer and say, Hey customer, just dropped all your groceries off at the front door. Thank you so much for choosing shipped or something like that and send the photo with that so they know that all their groceries are there and so they know exactly what you dropped off. Just in case some porch pirate comes and try to steal something, they have record of what you actually left at their door. And if all else fails, call shipped shopper support. Number six is responding to customers if you're going to be late. Sometimes things happen. If you're gonna be late, you wanna make sure that you are contacting the customer as soon as you think you are going to be late. This can increase your chances of getting a tip. It will help them understand what you're going through. And again, under promise, over deliver. If there's a situation, your car declined, the lines are long or whatever, you got a flat tire or whatever the case may be, let the customer know and say, hey, customer A, I am on my way to you with your groceries. I think I'll be about five minutes late. My apologies for the tardiness, but I am moving as fast as I can. Nine times out of 10, the customer will be more than understanding. Number seven is technical difficulties. There can be tons of technical difficulties. Like I've been saying, the servers could be down on ship side or on the store side. The customer could not have any money on their car and that's why the order won't go through. If you're having technical difficulties, Keep the customer in the loop. I've done this a few times and I was actually able to come to a solution without contacting shopper support. So in my situation, the customer's order was not showing up at Smart and Final. And I looked on my end, I was at the right location. It was showing up, everything was fine. So I called the customer and I was like, hey, your order actually isn't showing up over here. I don't really know what we can do about this. We came to the conclusion, she only lived less than a mile away from the store. She was just getting groceries because of COVID-19. So so she came down to the store and was able to purchase her groceries instead of me having to put everything back. So you never know what really can happen. That's why you should always keep your customers in the loop because sometimes they may just come on to the store and get the stuff and then they'll even give you a bigger tip. She gave me like a $25 tip from that order after all of that extra stuff we had to go through. 
There's also other times where the store may be closed, so you have to tell them that you can't even do the shop. Or I know this happens all the time at Target. Sometimes I have to put an item back after I'm processing the order because it can't identify the item. So I let the customer know, hey, I have to put your blueberries back because they are not being identified. And sometimes they'll ask me if I can purchase it. And nine times out of 10, I will because I just look at it like this. If I was trying to get groceries and I couldn't get something because of a technical difficulty, I would be so upset. So I would say something to the customer like, hey, customer A, I had to put this item back because it will not process through if you would like me to get this for you via Venmo, I could do that. I would only do that if it was under $10. Something that if I never got the money back, I would be fine. Some people are very, very against this. So if you're against this, that's cool. But it is an option for something like blueberries. So lastly, we're gonna talk about contactless delivery. Now, contactless delivery started because of COVID-19. When you're doing a contactless delivery, I personally let the person know when I'm leaving the store, when I pull up to their house, and I let them know when I am at their door. So that's three separate messages. So leaving the store, I'll say, hey, customer A, I'm leaving the store with your groceries now. I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Once I get to their house, I'll say, hey, customer A, I just pulled up in your driveway. I'm getting all of your groceries out of the car right now. And what that does is let them know that you're gonna be there. So if they wanna give you a cash tip, they can be ready. So it just makes everything a little more efficient. But if they do not come directly to the door, I will drop the groceries off, knock on the door, take a photo, and then I will send a message saying, hey, customer A just dropped all your groceries off at the door. Here's a picture to show you what I dropped off. And like I said earlier, that's your proof that you did your job right. So you guys, I hope you guys learned something from this information that I gave to you. If you have a question about anything that I said in this video, as always, put it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer it as soon as I can. If you guys like this video, make sure that you give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you hit that big red subscribe button down below. And make sure your notifications are on so you can get all of the alerts anytime your girl posts any new shipped content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.